Brush and Bolcom. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint Chaplin Grimaldus for the Black Templars. If you like the channel and you'd like to support me, my coffee and Patreon page are linked below. Now on to the video. So this is the finished Grimaldus miniature. I'm really pleased with how it turned out. It's got some really nice details on it, some really nice colours. You can get them looking great for the tabletop. Please do like, subscribe and comment as it really does help out the channel. First colour we're going to use is Citadel Corn Red. I'm just going to use this to do the leather strapping on the Crozius that he's got in his right hand there. Next we're going to use Citadel Mephist on Red. I'm going to use this to do his tabard, the casing for the plasma pistol and also the lenses for his helm. Then we're going to go for some Citadel Retributor armor. Now there's quite a few bits for this. I use the images of Grimaldus on the Games Workshop store to work out which part I was doing with Retributor armor. There seems to be some lighter and some darker gold. So we're using Retributor armor for certain parts and we're using Liberator gold for the rest. So you've got parts of his Crozius, some of the details on Grimaldus himself. And there's also some parts done in just Liberator Gold, which we'll be going on to next. Next we have Citadel Liberator Gold. We're going to be using this to paint up the Templar Cross on the Crozius. And then you've also got the hilt and the grip of the sword as well. He used a little bit of corn red on the grip of the sword on his power pack there too. And various other little details around the miniature. Now we're going to be using some Citadel Iron Hand Steel. This is to do all of the silvery metallics on Grimaldus. There's quite a few little bits on him. He's got the sword at the back, this chest piece here. Parts of the plasma pistol and the crozius. Then some other little smaller details like the chains and stuff like that. Next we're going to use Citadel Rakarth Flesh, this is going to be to do the parchments which go down either side of them. You've also got the pages of the book and a skull and the skeletal hand holding the blade at the top there too. You can also use this to do the candles which are dotted about on his power pack and there's one up on that sword too. Now we're going to use some Vallejo White. I'm going to use this to do the little shield on bottom left hand side there. Also you have the little Templar crosses on each shoulder and the Templar cross on his belt there. Now we're going to be using some Citadel Araman Blue. And this is just to do the plasma coils on his plasma pistol. Now 
Now I'm going to use a tiny little bit of Citadel Deathcore Drab. We're just going to use this on the cover of the book on his thigh there. And to finish off the base colours, we're going to use a little tiny bit of Citadel Screamer Pink and just use that to do the bookmark. The best shade that we're going to use is Citadel Seraphim Sepia. We're going to use this on all of the parts that we used Rakarth Flesh on. Next it's Citadel Null Oil, we're going to use this for all of the silvery coloured metallics, the bits that we use the Iron Hand Steel on. Now add some Citadel Carrowberg Crimson. I'm going to use this to do the little parchmenty bits on the back of the seals there. Also use this to do the tabard that he's wearing, the case of the plasma pistol. You've also got a little purity seal just hidden under his right arm there too. Now we're going to apply some Citadel Agrax Earthshade to all of the parts that we used Retributor Armour and Liberator Gold on. So just give these a nice coat of that. That's going to be Citadel Drakenhof Nightshade. I'm going to use this to paint the coils on the plasma pistol. And the final shade or contrast is going to be Citadel Apothecary White Contrast. I'm going to use this on all the parts that we painted with Vallejo White earlier on. As always, any kind of white will do for those parts, so any Citadel one or anything like that it is just a very plain white colour that you want. Now to apply the colours again we're going to start with Citadel Mephist on red. I'm going to start working on the tabard first. As always you want to be thinking about where the light is catching the tabard and applying a Mephist on red to those areas so that you're leaving the shade in the recesses and trying to catch the top surfaces and top edges of all those little bits of cloth. I will link up the video to doing red cloaks because that will show you start to finish on how I paint up a red cloak and it's exactly the same principles that you use on that as you would use on the tabard. Next colour is Citadel Evil Sun Scarlet. This is going to be to highlight the Mephist on red that we've just put on. So you're going to be doing the same again, thinking about whether the light will be catching it more and highlighting those areas. So it's mainly going to be top surfaces probably covering about 50 percent of the area where you reapplied the mephist on red if 
final highlight for this red is going to be Citadel Wild Rider Red. And this is just going to be to mainly do edge highlights in some of the wider areas of red, just to build up that colour and get it nicely highlighted and a little bit more bright and vibrant. Returning to the gold now, we're going to be reapplying the Retributor armour, leaving the shade in the recesses, and just building up the Retributor armour on the surfaces where it would be catching the light. If there's somewhere where it wouldn't be catching the light, you can just use this to do like little edge highlights, such as the underside of the crosses where you've got those little kind of details where the bottom of those feathery bits are. Just do a little edge highlight on the underside of the crosses while you are reapplying more of the Retributor armour on the bits that are catching more light. Now I'm going to highlight the gold using Citadel Liberator Gold. You're just going to do about 50% of the area that you've just covered with Retributor armour. It's going to be the top surfaces and the edges that will be catching more light. We're also going to use this to paint the colour back onto the Liberator Gold areas, like that cross on the crosses here where we're reapplying that. And you want to be thinking about where the light is going to be catching that crosius and just highlighting those areas. So it's going to be like the top surfaces of the horizontal piece there, leaving the bottom surfaces shaded, but with the odd edge highlight if you wanted to. Next colour is going to be adding some Vallejo Model Air Chrome to the Liberator Gold, and then just using this to do edge highlights on both the Retributor Armour sections and also on the Liberator Gold sections. And also use this to pick out all of the little studs and things like that on the gold areas. The next colour is going to be Citadel Iron Hand Steel. I'm going to reapply this to all of the areas that we painted with the Iron Hand Steel earlier on. Being very carefully to pick out some of those details, like the grill on his face and the sections of chain too. Now I'm going to use a tiny little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome just to highlight all of those metallic areas, making sure that you're only putting it on the top surfaces where it'd be catching more light. We're now going to add some Rakarth flesh back to the miniature. So we're going to be highlighting or replacing the colour on the scroll work down his front. So doing that in a similar way that you did the cloth to the tabard, you want to be thinking about where the light would be catching the scroll work and painting it like so. Making sure that you're leaving the shades in the recesses, mainly catching the top edges and the surfaces that would be getting more light. We also want to be using the Rakarth flesh on the pages of the book and also the sections of bone and the candles too. We're now going to add some Vallejo white to the Rakarth flesh to lighten that up and do the first highlight. So when you're highlighting it you're going to be doing about 50% of the area of the previous layer and just building that up on the top edges and the top surfaces with the new highlight. So we're going to add a little bit more white to the previous mix and do exactly the same again, 
but highlighting the smaller area and it will be once again the areas that will be catching the most light on those parchments and the pages on the book Now, although they use the same base colour, we're going to start working on the bone sections, the skull, and also that hand gripping the grip of the sword at the top there. So we're going to use Ushabti bone to highlight the Bakar flesh on these areas. So you want to be doing about 50% of the area that you did with the Rakarth flesh on the top surface, and the top edges to make them look as though they're catching the light. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Screaming Skull to highlight those sections of bone. So it's mainly going to be edge highlights and the very tips of the like finger bones and things like that. And the edges which will be catching the most light. Now we're going to start working on the grip of the crozius with Citadel Corn Red. All you're going to do is use this to colour each of the sections of the grip with the Corn Red. To highlight the corn red, we are going to use a little bit of Citadel Wazdaka red. We're also using this to do the purity seal under his arm too. So don't forget about that, it's quite neatly tucked away. With a little bit of scroll coming down next to the big piece of scroll work. But you're going to be painting about the top half of each of these segments with the Wazdaka red. So we can get that nicely highlighted. Final highlight for these areas is Citadel Pink Horror. We're just going to do an extreme edge highlight on the top of each of these sections of the hilt. You'll also be using these colours on the sections of hilt or grip that you can see on the sword at the back there too. We're going to start working on the plasma pistol now, so we're going to use Citadel Araman Blue once more. And we're just going to paint the coils, each of the coils with this, leaving the shade and the recesses between. I'm going to be using some Vallejo White. Mix that in with the Araman Blue to do the first highlight on the coils. You're going to be doing this on maybe the top two thirds of the coils, leaving the Araman Blue around the base of it. Then we're going to add a little bit more Vallejo White to the previous mix and do another highlight, which is going to be about 50% of the previous layer. Once more we are going to use a little bit of the layer white, mix it with the previous mix to lighten that up and do about 50% of the previous layer once more.
we're going to use some Vallejo white just pure Vallejo white at the moment just to do the very top edges and the very underside of the coils we're also going to use this to do spots of light on the lenses and also to reapply the white back to the Templar crosses on the shoulder pads and on his belt The last major part to paint on the miniature is the black. So we're going to reapply the Vallejo black to any areas that we might have overspilt with other paints or any areas we might have missed from when we've clipped it from the sprue or when you built it or anything like that. Just touch that up with a little bit of black and then that'll get it all sorted for when we come to highlight. We're now going to use some Vallejo German Grey. This is going to be to highlight the black. So you're going to be putting this on the top surfaces of it. So the very kind of top of the power pack, the top of his leg and that kind of area. Just to give it that highlight. The German Grey is really, really dark. So it highlights it without making it too obvious and too blatant when you've done it on. Final highlight on the black is going to be Citadel Mechanicus Standard Grey. I'm going to use this just to do edge highlights. So it's going to be very, very thin highlights around the miniature just to make those details stand out. So you can see him paint the top surfaces and edges of the skull on his knee pad here. And we're going to work the same kind of technique all the way around the top edges and the areas that be catching the light. Now don't put the edge highlights all the way around the panel. I'd only put it on the top edges just because otherwise it can look a little bit like Tron where you've got these sources of light and highlights above and below certain parts. So you need to just put that on the top edges. Next we're going to use Vallejo Model Air Chrome just to pick out all of the studs. He's got plenty on his leg and on his helmet. He's still got some on his power pack and the odd one dotted round on his arms too. I'm going to do the book. I'm going to reapply some of that death core drab to it. You can see from either bad cutting out or details on it that there's a few little nicks and scrapes on the book. I'm going to add a few more of those too. But basically this drab layer is going to be to get a bit of colour back on the book and just try and avoid those areas where they've been badly scuffed. And then when we come on with the next layer, we'll be doing little highlights that bring those details out. Next is going to be a little bit of Vallejo white mixed with the Deathcore drab. I'm just going to do some really fine edge highlights on these, just on the edges that will be catching the light. We're also going to go down the sides and across the bottom where it's got some little nicks and scrapes out of it and just highlight the bottom edge of those.